You see, here's something about the glory we have to understand. That we're in a season of tremendous we shift. We have to be a people. We must choose to be a people. It's time for the church to make Jesus their magnificent obsession. It's time to be men and women of God. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another week with Michael and I here by the fireside. It's so great to see you again in my imagination, but it's wonderful to have you here together with us as we're, we've been talking about the book of Jude a little bit, and uh, we're going to continue that. And it's intriguing to me that what the, 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 the revelation God releases as you study scripture. Now, we haven't even gotten into word studies, Mike which I don't know that we will just go around either, but just the nuggets on the surface are precious. That's That kind of blows my mind that we could talk about a verse and then God would unpack so much. Um, it just shows you that uh, the word is inexhaustible, that people can really get some nuggets and treasures. Oh, absolutely. And where did we leave off? We're on uh, verse 4, is that it? I think we're starting verse 4. So I've been reading out of the New American Standard, and you've got the King, King James. James. So go ahead. Yeah, so King James puts it like this. <laughs> For there are certain men crept in unaware uh, who were before old ordained to this, who were before old, ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, let me read it now in New American. This is one of the reasons I like to take three or four different versions and lay them down side by side and go over them. Yeah. But it says, for certain persons have crept in unnoticed, those who were long beforehand marked out for this condemnation, ungodly persons who turn the grace of our Lord into to licentiousness and deny our only Master and Lord Jesus Christ. Master yes. and Lord. Master and Lord. So it, Master is Adon, Lord is Elohim. He's our Master and our Elohim, Yeshua HaMashiach. So I mean, right there, you've he is God. It's the yeah. It's, it kind of exposes the relationship to us, or explodes it, so that we can see what kind of relationship we have with the Lord. Now, the reason they they they've uh, turned the grace into licentiousness is, is again back in verse three, where they have not contended for the faith that was once handed down to them, and when you get turned aside to other gospels doctrines that are not in line with the word, the slippery slope is into apostasy at the end. Oh, yes. But the steps through that, I mean, you, you have rebellion, defection, disintegration, and corruption. And, and right here, we're seeing part of that rebellion, disintegration, defection is licentiousness. Between, between disintegration and defection is licentiousness. And so uh, part of that if we look in the other epistles, is where they start preaching the gospel for gain. Yes. In other words, they make it a monetary thing, and it's all about, gimme, 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 my name is Jimmy. Yes. And instead of understanding, freely you receive, freely give. Yeah, that is uh, that is definitely part of the deception that's going on, probably um, you know across centuries, but now it just stands out so much that in these days that you see that continually it's like you you know I, I don't even know how to react to, to some of the things that I see of people advertising you know turn your turn your gift of God into a six-figure income it's like what what is that yeah you know yeah they've they've uh, when I wrote my first book I started getting all of these solicitors trying to help promote da 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 yeah. and we're going to Make sure your, you know, household name. Yeah, and I thought, no, no, that's just the wrong spirit, and I'm not inviting that anywhere near. It's it's yeah, it's definitely a wrong spirit. But I think um, what it, what it talks about here in Jude is that uh, they creep in because people, if they haven't made that choice and they contend for their faith, these other things, these influences. 
uh, they creep in, these false prophets, these false pastors. So in other words, they're not detectable at first. No, it's like the frog being boiled a little bit at a time. And the people, they get so comfortable with the worldliness that's presented to them that they don't even realize that they're headed towards death. Right, right. And that's that's it. So the, really, the, the enemy is very subtle in his approach to bringing deception to the believer. Yeah. Because the truth is, for most Christians, if who've read the Bible, when it's blatantly and distinctly contrary to the word, they go, wait, 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 that's not right. So he starts this process of slowly changing the dynamic until finally you'll embrace even something that's blatantly against the word of God. Yeah, and, and a lot of people can't see that because it is so deceptive. You... you um, uh, the way some someone will present something. It sounds so spiritual and holy and good. And I, I know that uh, an example is I, I was talking to a man that, you know, I thought he had salvation. I thought he was saved. I thought he was born again. And his best friend was the pastor of his church. They were golfing buddies. They did things together. And uh, one day he was telling me that... Uh, you know, that's uh, even though we have our religious tradition. Now, this came out of left field. Suddenly, he's talking about religious tradition. So, what do you mean by that? He goes, "Well, you know, we call him Jesus, but other people call him Buddha, and other people call him Mohammed." And it's like this guy doesn't have a clue, but he's listening to this pastor that, all, although he acts very spiritual and humble and holy, he's leading people to hell. Yeah, that's that's a shame. But that that's happening all the time. But it is. Again, we can look at the shepherd of that flock and say, You're culpable, but at the same time, I'm not supposed to depend on the shepherd right. that we you know, a local church to bring me truth from the word. I'm supposed right. to spend time with the Lord for myself. So there's a dual culpability there. Right. There's there's no uh the, the salvation does not pass down from generation. Each person is responsible. That's so, exactly true. But they are, they are very clever. They are very deceptive. And, uh, you know, in this culture that we're in, it fosters, uh, well, everyone has their own opinion, brother. It fosters that inclusiveness. We want to love everybody. We want to include everybody. And so they'll welcome sin into the church as as a... Um, means to compassion or it's a love, some kind of love. And it's really not because they're, they're not giving people the truth. And people are deceived. That's, there's no doubt about it. I've often wondered sometimes, you know, and I understand the dynamic that it's easy to be deceived if you're not in the Word and you don't know truth. But I'm almost convinced at times that people their flesh really wants the deception even if they do understand a measure of truth because they enjoy the pleasures of sin right and, they and so both you know the word a simple thing for me the word is very clear about um what is sin what is not what is acceptable to god what is not and and i think we touched on this a few weeks ago <clears throat> mind-altering drugs yeah. Just because they become legal in a society doesn't mean that they're acceptable to God. Yeah. Because what we that stance right there means I'm going to take the standard of the world and make the Bible conform to the standard of the world. Yes. So what do you do when it's legal in certain nations? Do you know pedophilia is legal in certain nations? Yes. So is that okay now, even though God completely condemns something like that? So... Why are we so complacent as believers? So we lay down and just say, oh, whatever, we're out of here. No, no, no. You stand up and be the light until you're out of here. But you don't, you don't allow the world to dictate to you and to the, to the congregation, to the church, what is acceptable. Yeah, that's, that's a huge thing. And many of the Christian denominations that what they have decided 
uh, to make, I don't know, the gospel that they share more palatable. That, culturally uh, relevant. Culturally, culturally relevant, yes. And uh, it's just out there. I mean, people think, people think that it's not, okay? They, they think they're in the right place. And uh, I, maybe we're just being too nitpicky, too, you know. But think about it. Why do people think it's not? Because they have been so indoctrinated into the world system of embracing anything because it's, you know, culture accepts it, so it's got to be okay in the church. So they embrace that mentality. Yeah. And the, the sad part is the leaders who should know the Word of God, they teach it, quote, unquote. Yeah. They've gone to school to learn the Word of God, quote, unquote don't adhere to the Word of God. No. No, and, and uh, you know, you brought up, brought up the uh, <laughs> drug example, and I've known people that, well, it's legal now, so I guess, uh, you know, it's okay, we can do it. And it's like, I don't know where you're getting that information. You know, you, you gotta stick with the Word because the culture, um, I've, I've been to church services, that it just blows my mind. They, they are like social events and I feel like went the, by the things they say, they're so disrespecting uh, the sacrifice of our Lord. They just uh, it, like it means nothing, right? And it's and it's very disgusting. But this is this is across this is across the whole culture. I mean, this whole um, craziness that you know that they've come up with that they don't believe anything. It's like the guy said. You know, you call him Jesus, and someone else calls him Muhammad. It's like that's that's false. Yeah, absolutely, it's false. False you teachers. Know, reminds me of in my study of church history that uh, every past move of God started birthed in truth, and then man decided they got to organize it, and you know, put it together in a structure which began a denomination or a movement which put God in a box or tried to put God in a box and say, this is how it's to be done. And then because there's no more life, because they've got the revelation, right. it stagnates and dies and turns into a, apostasy. Every past move of God has done that. Their beginnings were glorious, but their end, where they're at today, is is cringeworthy, if not outright darkness. And one of the things we have to pay attention to in this hour is as God is releasing His Spirit and an awakening is taking place, don't try to administrate what God is doing. Let right. God be God and be subservient to that and definitely don't try and take ownership of what He's doing. Absolutely. Let the Lord do what He wants and submit to him. Yeah, that's submission, I guess, is a hard thing for a lot of people. It's, it's a rebellious culture that we're in. And when it talks about the days of Lot and the days of Noah, you see, you can see people, how they prefer themselves above, above others, even in the church. I mean, I've seen it over and over and over. People contending for the microphone, lying about so they get the best time slot arguing over who gets to lead worship. You know, you got to do it last time. I, you know, you sang two minutes longer than me. I mean, just craziness that you, in, in supposedly good churches. And, you know, there may, it's not like everyone in the church is like that. So you might have a body of believers where you've got a few that are, have crept in and they kind of throw disruption. And the whole doesn't really see it because they oftentimes don't have access Behind the scenes. Yeah. Behind the scenes, so to speak. But again, that speaks to the lack of integrity of leadership. We should be equipping the saints. Yes. Equipping the saints, not deceiving the saints and making them followers of us. Right. Because we want to fill our coffers and look successful. So part of that equipping is teaching them how to discern good from bad, right from wrong. We had a... Uh, a school one time many years ago, Reshma and I in a small town north of Spokane, and uh, and we were teaching people on discernment and different things. And so one night I said, look, we've got a guest coming and he's going to share with you. And so let's sit. 
And so they brought, I brought the person in and they shared. And the next day I said, so what did you think? Oh, that was so wonderful. That was awesome. I said, was it? I said, didn't you catch this, 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 and this? And they went, what? I said, just because I invited somebody in doesn't mean your discernment shuts off. I did that on purpose. Wow. And they went, oh. Now, it wasn't something dark, dark, dark. Right. But it was off. And they were shocked that I would do that. I said, how better to teach them? Yeah. And I said, number one, we're not judging the individual. We need to pray for that one. Let's take time right now because they're carrying with them uh, uh, an error. Yes. And so we pray for them. So we're not going to be talking about them. But, you know, I did that on purpose to teach them. You got to pay attention. We've been investing the word. You've been spending time in the word and in prayer. And I said, how many of you actually had a nudge like, this is interesting, but you overrode that because I invited this person in. And there was only two or three that truthfully said, well, yeah, I kind of did, but I thought he was all right since you... I said, don't ever do that. Yeah. Do you understand leaders can miss, the, miss it too? So pay attention. In this, in this time period that we're in, um, it, you, you look at what the world is doing. You look at the deception that they keep putting out over and over and over, even uh, <laughs> to deliver fear to people. Sure. It's like a continuous barrage, and people aren't even aware that they're being uh, programmed. Manipulated, yeah. programmed, manipulated, yes. And it happens in the church too. Even people that believe that they're doing God's will by um, doing social things that are acceptable that the Word of God teaches against. Well, wasn't it Karl Marx or uh, one of those back then that says, you tell a lie long enough, people believe it is truth. Yes. And that's the whole stratagem of a lot of what's taking place. And without even realizing it, people that have... Well, well I'll take an example. Somebody I know is a pathological liar. They have so convinced themselves that certain things are true because they've lied about it for so many years that it becomes their reality. Yeah. When you can show by documentation and evidence, no, that's not it. But they believe the lie because they've spoken it so many times. Well, the same thing in any endeavor. If you're fed misinformation long enough, you start taking it as truth. Right. What makes that even worse is people are so lazy because they rely upon, at one time when I grew up, you could rely upon the news to tell you the truth. You could rely on the leaders to tell you the truth. You could rely on the pastor. To, and at one time they, they did a better job. Mm -hmm. But let's face it, at the end of the age where apostasy is to be rampant, we're in a, a season now where you, you need to go to the Word and confirm whether it's truth or not. Yes. This is a wake-up call. I, I, I look at the book of Jude as a wake-up call. Just read it, look around you, and uh, pray for greater discernment because I see this all over the place. Oh, it's yeah. not like I'm you know, w wanting it to happen, but I see it, and I try to warn people that will listen. And some will listen, some won't. It seems like uh, people don't like to be corrected nowadays. But, um, no. <laughs> but, you know, I try to share with people, okay, that's not biblical. Like the guy that was telling me about, you know, we call him Jesus. No, Jesus is a real person. He is really God. It's not like we can just make up a name for him. He has a name. Yeah. You know, just like I don't call you by a different name. Um, it's the same with our Lord. He is real. It's not a fantasy. And, uh, but people, if they're not taught that, they just uh, think they're doing their duty. They're going to church. They're friends with the pastor. You know, they even let the pastor beat them at golf once in a while so he feel, feels good about himself. And, and uh, it's, it's a bad time, and people need to wake up. Oh, very much. There's, there's much in the book of Jude that is, uh, really needs to be read and meditated upon, thought upon, and 
even studied to a you know great extent. Um, he says in verse five, "I desire to remind you, though you all know, or you know all things once for all, that the Lord, after saving a people out of the land of Eden, out of the world, subsequently destroyed those who did not believe." So. When Pharaoh and the Egyptians followed them, they were destroyed because they didn't believe the word of the Lord for their generation. So when we come out of the world, we better stay out of the world and don't walk in unbelief because the circumstances that follow that unbelief will end up be destroying you. It shows the seriousness of what we're talking Absolutely. about. Absolutely. And it says, And angels who did not keep their own domain, the first estate, but abandoned their proper abode, he has kept in eternal bonds under darkness for the judgment of the great day. So there's a lot of um, a lot of teaching being really, if people are speaking on God's inspiring them to talk about mm -hmm. what's taking place. And I think it's in light of the fact that, you know, the Nile is drying up and there's certain places in scripture that talk they were locked under the, the Nile River until the appointed time. And, right. and uh, so it's got people thinking, it's got people wondering, and which is good. But they're going to be locked up until the time of judgment. Now their offspring, mm -hmm. that's a different thing. But, but we're, we're in a unique time. And the Lord is, is talking to us. We, we should not be compromising and we shouldn't be lazy in our pursuit of Him. Yeah, we can't, we can't afford to do that for anyone's sake. I've had people tell me, well, I don't have to think about that because I'm fine. I believe what's true. I, I know what, you know, what's real. And uh, so I don't think I need to know about this or hear about it. And, and you know, my response is we, are, we don't live unto ourselves. We are equipped to help others and pull others out of the quagmire and to bless others and to see them come to salvation, see them come to Christ. So even though you might, you know, you might have it all together, you might not be deceived at all, but I guarantee you have friends that are deceived that believe wrong things. I mean, if you look at the statistics of what people believe in the American church, it blows your mind what people believe. Yeah that Jesus isn't really God, he was a good man. They teach that in, in mainline Protestant churches. Yeah. And uh, so we ha I think we have to be aware, if not for ourselves, how about for our loved ones, that we're willing to know the truth just so that we can help them. Well, you know, in connecting this verse 6 where the angels didn't keep their first estate, Yeah. he says, just as Sodom and Gomorrah, verse 7, and the cities around them, since they in the same way as these, these who? These angels indulged in gross immorality and went after strange flesh, just like the angels did, mm -hmm. and they are exhibited as an example in undergoing the punishment of eternal fire. So rebellion leads to judgment. Yeah. Now let's face it, Sodom and Gomorrah, those fallen watchers, if you will, those fallen angels, they didn't start out in that place. Right. Something came that caused them to defect from truth, seed of rebellion, and they entered into that path away from the truth that God had established until the end result was judgment. And judgment comes, and it can take on many forms in many different lives. You know, one sin is not weightier than another. Yeah. Although defilement can be more Weighty, and there is a difference between Cause sin damage. and defilement. Yeah, so it says in verse eight. Yet these same, in the same way, these men also by dreaming, or by imagining, or by meditating on things they shouldn't, defiled the flesh, and they rejected authority, and even reject and uh, um, revile angelic majesty. So here we are. You're presented with an opportunity to focus on something that's not godly. You choose to go ahead and do that. Right. And now you have to begin the defiling process. Because it, every one of us knows this. If we're, we're challenged with something, 
and we we're trying to solve a problem and we're reading on it and studying on it and trying to work through it. Even as we go to sleep, we, sometimes we, we think about it, we dream about it. And oftentimes that's the place of, you know, that the solution comes is during that. Right. In the same way, if I'm imagining or thinking on things that are contrary to God or that are outright defilement, eventually I'm going to move into that camp and be defiled. Yes, absolutely. It's like the principle that you talk about what you focus on, you connect with. Exactly. And I think that's how people get demonized and they get a veil comes over them that they've said this is okay, it's just a dream, it's just a this, it's just a that, and that deception just uh, dictates their life and uh, they focus on something and it captivates them and the end result is... Well, they, it captivates them and they keep feeding it. Yeah. Well, you know, I've had these, let's go read that book. Oh, let's look at that magazine. Oh, let's watch that movie. Or let's hang out with people of like mind. And pretty soon you're fast and furious heading the wrong direction. Yeah. And, it, and I've seen people even in ministry do that. That uh, because they had a draw, you know, to, to the flesh that they wanted to feed, you know, they would go into places that they should not go with the, with the idea of, I'm going to preach the gospel there. And I had one man tell me that uh, he was going to go to a certain place to preach the gospel. I said, I'm going to tell you right now that that is a bad move. You, you pray for those people from your prayer closet, but do not go there. And I felt like that was the Lord's word for him. And uh, it turned out bad. Like two years later, he was back, you know, drinking and, and carousing and being drunk and smoking mm. dope and... Yeah, so uh, and as, as far as I know, he didn't never got right. So he wasn't he strong enough in his relationship with God not to be pulled back in. No. And, you know, it just shows how deceptive the enemy can be. Even though he thought, I'm going to do good, I'm going to help people. Uh, if he really thought that, I don't know. Yeah. It's hard to judge that, you know. But, you know, people say, well, you shouldn't judge that. Yeah, you should. You, you have a, a responsibility to judge correctly. If a thief comes and wants to manage the church money, you have to judge that situation and you have to say what is right. And so you have to be able to judge. You have to have discernment to, to say this is this and this is that. That's the type of judgment. We're not talking about people's salvation, and, you know, when we're talking right. about that. Right. Well, another Session is over. Is it that time already? It's that time already. <laughs> wow. You sure are long-winded, man. I don't know. I know. I, I don't good. know what my problem is, but... Yeah. <laughs> no problem. We just love talking about the Word. Amen. So thank you again for being with us this week. We'll see if we continue on next week in Jude. I think we probably will because there's a lot of good stuff we haven't even touched on. A little bit. But until then, keep your heart and your eyes and your intention focused on the Lord.